What's up everybody, Nate here. Another update on the truck build. It is uh, Friday, April 9th, I think. Uh, we made some good progress this week. It started on some new things. So a couple things to show you. I'll just get right into it. Air tanks, air dryer, and batteries. So I'm gonna link to a couple things in the description for you guys. This air dryer was like 65 bucks and it replaces the old big air dryer that is like $180 to rebuild or something stupid. So, um, and the cartridges for this air dryer are like 12 bucks. You can get them at Napa. They just spin on, replace them like once a year or maybe every two years with these trucks. So really good. I wasn't sure about the fittings, but I got all that sorted out. And uh, there was only one adapter I needed for the governor line. Um, and that was just a 3 8 NPT to quarter NPT. The airline is 3 8 the new air filter or dryer is a quarter NPT. So just that one bushing and you're all set. Everything else unscrews and screws right back in. So this is that air dryer right there. And I'll link to this in the description. Um, it's got an in and an out. I mounted it right here. It has its own regulator on it. Um, so you can set this pressure up to like 145 if you want, but I've got this dialed into 120. And then this here is the governor line. And that just comes back to this port back here. Um, so this is quarter NPT on the housing and then there's a little bushing. And then this piece here is what came out of the original dryer. So that's done, purge valve on the bottom. Um, this is a 12 volt um, heater or is that won't work with the truck, but I'm not anywhere cold. I can always unscrew two screws and swap that out with a 24 volt heater for like another 10 bucks. Um, so this is where I put my air tanks. These are gonna be up, um, the cross members are coming just across here. So plenty of room up there, all the connections in the middle, the wet tank on the bottom. And then I've also got uh, my quick release fitting on this side where I'm gonna run an air hose around over here somewhere and uh, have another quick disconnect so I can have air from the wet tank for running tools or anything. Um, so I'm gonna get all that plugged in. There's a couple of air lines I've got to lengthen and shorten and kind of mess with there. So we get all that done. Um, battery tray is just bolt on and hangs in. Um, these have keepers on the back. So there's plenty of room here for the back, for the battery to go out the back you know, and slide over without getting in the way of that uh, drive shaft there. So that is done. Um, I'm gonna show you the hydraulic pump and where I put that, because that kind of turned out pretty cool and I learned a lot about hydraulics in the meantime. And that is over here. So here's my gas tank, front tire, rear tire, and hydraulic pump and tank are here. And again, I'll put a link to this in the description this whole pump and reservoir, it's a three quart reservoir, which is way more than what we need for this. Um, and I got a 12 volt pump just because it was like half the price. Um, this whole setup was like less than 200 bucks. It's got two um, 12 volt relays. It's a dual action, so it'll pump both up and down. And you can see right now, I just have two hoses hooked to it because right now it is hooked directly to the cab tilt. So um, eventually I'm going to change that and I'm going to put in a spool system with some handles. And I think I'm going to put it in the back back here. Maybe, I'm not sure about this, but I'm going to have some handles here. One handle up and down will do the lift on the back for the motorcycles and spare tires up and down. One handle will tilt the cab up and down from here. And then I'll have four handles for leveling this subframe. So I'm also gonna have rams here that go up and push up against this next level of subframe. And that way, if the truck is not perfectly level, I can come back and I can move these corners independently. It is um, captured spring, so that's not putting any stress on the box whatsoever. There's no resistance or twisting or anything on that. Um, so I think I'm gonna do that back here. I'm, I might put it up here, I'm not really sure. Um, this is kind of where I ended up with some generator space up here. Um, oh, super important. So I hooked that thing, that um, hydraulic pump right to the cab tilt and the cab went up super fast. It was great. Went back down and locked. 
So there's a safety valve in there and you either need to drill it out and weld it or you can do what I did and you can get a flow restrictor. And pardon the mess, this is just temporary right now because I am changing it all, but you can see there's the hydraulic pump and these two hoses here. So you find the down hose and what I did was I got the cab part way down and I just cracked a line because I didn't want to follow them all through the frame and saw which one was leaking. Now this is a flow restrictor. So you can turn this and it will slow it down or you can speed it up and it's got a little set screw you can lock it in. This was like 25 bucks and then a couple of adapters to adapt to the hydraulic lines that I pulled off the um, regular hydraulic box that was up here and use those lines just to put this together temporarily. Um, so that keeps the cab coming down nice and slow and keeps that safety from engaging. Um, the other thing we did yesterday and today was I started on the roof rack. Um, can't really see it too well from down here and I will climb up in a moment and show you, but I have a crossbar there on the upper. Then on this corner, I'm going to have an elbow with the bar that comes down and it follows this line here. So it's curved like this, comes in nice and close, and then it's gonna mount in here somewhere. Um, and I'm just gonna have an elbow return to a plate down here, keep it nice and strong and sturdy, and it'll be uh, replaceable. So if I do hit something on that bar and bend it, it's gonna protect the windshield and the side windows. I can just unbolt that, slide that bar out, make another one, slide it in, bolt it back in and be done. Also gonna do a crossbar up here so I can have some light tabs and also protect the windshield from anything else coming this direction. Um, same thing over here, obviously. And then on the top, I'm gonna have a roof AC mounted up there. So the top, it's gonna be hard to draw with my finger. It's gonna be set back just a little bit. I've seen a lot of guys where they take like the front and they push it out like that. And to me, that's just too big. It's just not my style. So these bars are going to go up and kind of fade in a little bit, maybe a couple inches. And then I'm going to have a step up section that's flat. And then another step up section that goes back to the box. So I have a ladder on both sides, I'll climb up the ladder and this section will open. I'll be able to stand and walk all the way across behind the AC. Then I'll have two cubbies on each side of the AC for stuff and a surfboard rack in the back where I can put my surfboards. And everything is going to be sheeted with aluminum, so it'll be in the shade. It'll be protected and out of sight. The bottom is going to be expanded metal and the back will be expanded metal. But it'll be a really nice, safe, secure storage spot for stuff that I want in the shade and out of people's like normal reach. Um, I'm going to go around here and I'll show you kind of what I'm doing on the roof and how we chose to mount this. Come on up. Yeah, I still haven't figured that out, but I think I got it figured out. Just haven't done anything with it yet. So here is the base of the roof rack. And what we did was just um, fish mount some pipe to plate. And we're gonna rib nut this in with some big heavy duty rib nuts. And that'll keep it nice and tight and good. So there's that crossbar. The other piece will come off this and go down. Same on the other side. And then I extended this back. The front of the box is gonna be back here a little bit. So this just gives me some extra storage room. So when I come up on the ladder, this is temporary. It's tap, tacked in right now. Um, we're probably gonna move this up to the back of the air conditioning and then put some cross pieces in for walking on it. Um, cause that'll be the main area that I'll be walking on is this kind of back half. So, um, this buys me an extra couple feet of storage having this back here, which is really nice. So I'll have tons of room up top. Plus I'll have a fairing that will hopefully help with some of the aerodynamics. And then on the sides, we're going to flare it out to the box. Cause my box is 102 wide, like the largest you can have legally in the U S. Um, so it'll flare out to the box on both sides and kind of have a nice wind deflector setup. Um, other than that, that was kind of what we did this week. It's kind of been a busy week and lots of little like details that we were sorting out while we were building it. Um, and lots of other stuff going on. Here's the base um, with the floor. We welded in the sheet 
on the bottom and then we'll fill all this with insulation and all my plumbing and electrical and all that stuff will live in there these bars we finally got bent right to how i wanted them to look for the front those are kind of the brush bars in front of the windshield there and we've got this nice radius in it that followed but the bender won't roll the first like six inches so we ended up cutting and slicing some slices in this and then bending each of these parts individually to give like this nice curve that kicks into that elbow up top so that worked out really nice it's really cool it follows the roof line and kind of look and feel of the whole truck um so i think it'll blend really well and look really good so that's about it um got some more stuff to do but it's the weekend i take a couple days off and have some fun and get back to it next week so thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't appreciate it if you have any questions let me know and i uh, look forward to seeing you next time all right guys take it easy